Hi, so today I want to talk about human beings as justification machines. Uh, we are amazing at making justifications for uh, everything pretty much. Uh, why I wanted to talk about this is I was thinking about how you know, people have this tendency to think that uh, pleasure cannot exist without pain. And for you to have a rich, happy and fulfilled life, you also have to have suffering in it. Uh, and let me tell you, after being in a depression for a decade, uh, for about 10 years of my short life, uh, being in quite a miserable state, never suicidal, and uh, never wanting to kill myself, I had enough luck that I could recognize that, you know, it was not my fault. My sort of depression was just a reaction to a normal reaction to a really abnormal world and everything that's going on. So, uh, you know, I had some peace from that, but, you know, I had many feelings that, you know, I might as well be dead. Uh, let's put it like that. But after all of that happening and after experiencing that, not once, not once when I have a happy moment do I think, oh, this wonderful moment is made so much better because I spent 10 years in depression. Not once do I look at the beautiful sunset and think, wow, you know what makes this sunset so miraculous and beautiful? The fact that one day we will inevitably cease to exist. No, never, that doesn't happen. And I, I suspect that for most people, that is not the case either. You don't think about the pain and suffering, you know, it's only, only an afterthought. Maybe, you know, after a long day of doing good things, you know, and feeling good, you're lying in bed or something and thinking, oh, you know, this is so much better than the time that, you know, I had a really horrible time. So in comparison, this is much better. Of course that happens. But while we are having these peak experiences, uh, I sincerely doubt that people are actively keeping in mind uh, their, their bad times. So uh, also I think that I wondered a lot about, uh, is it possible for a human being to grow up, uh, to be fully functioning and happy human being uh, without any suffering at all? you know, without any punishments, uh, without any negative reinforcement. I believe that positive reinforcement in human beings at least has a much more positive uh, overall healthy effect than negative reinforcement uh, ever does. So essentially negative reinforcement, if your kid does something that you don't like, then you yell at them, scream at them, you punish them, you know, no, don't do that. Positive reinforcement is all the good things that they do. You encourage them and say that, you know, well done and, and good job and whatever. So I, I think it's way more worthwhile to reward and appreciate the good than it is to punish the bad. And I think with positive reinforcement, you know, in of itself, naturally, it will arise that the kid will have enough common sense to, you know, stay away from the, you know, objectively, objectively bad things uh, that you wouldn't want them to have. I think what it really comes down to is that yes, this fundamental need for human beings to justify because the world is so chaotic, random, unpredictable. <laughs> we have just arisen on this random planet by seemingly complete accident, you know. <laughs> we have no idea where we are, what we are. We have some ideas, of course, but, um, you know, it's, it's very overwhelming. You know, the more you think about it and the more you understand our place in the universe, truly, all of the coincidences, everything that made us what we are right now, it is much, it is a lot. Um, so, of course, uh, you know, our roots, as more primitive people, you know, we, we, we had tons of justifications. Now we, our justifications have molded and shaped their uh, shape and size, but their justifications nonetheless. Uh, so one thing that I want to talk about is death. And uh, I, I think death is still something that is inescapable for well everyone. Uh, uh, and therefore, once you can't change it, people, you know, try to find rationalizations for it. So, you know, it's death that gives life meaning, people say. Uh, I could not disagree with that more. I'm not saying that I want infinite life. Maybe I do. I don't know. I'm not smart enough for that decision yet. Maybe in the future, hopefully AI help me. But um, 
at the moment I can't say, but I can say for certain that, you know, at its best, if if we do what we can, then life is certainly worth living. Uh, what a dumb thing, truly, what a dumb thing to say that it's death that gives meaning to life. Death takes all meaning from life. Death takes all joy from life. You know, speak with anyone who's lost their mother or father, brother, sister, the loved one. You know, their death did not bring any more meaning to their life. It took meaning from their life. You know, so it's one of those stupid things that everyone keeps saying, you know, death and the shortness of life makes us appreciate it more. I will tell you, I'm 99% certain of this. The human mind cannot comprehend death, truly. The human mind cannot comprehend death enough to appreciate it or to have in our heads that, you know, it's, it's somehow our limited number of days, you know, makes it worthwhile. I don't ever go to a vacation period I don't ever take vacations but you know hypothetically if I were to take a vacation I don't ever take a vacation thinking that oh you know what makes this vacation more worthwhile and pleasurable for me the fact that it will end in like three days or something no never you know I'm never with the person that I love and thinking you know what makes this time what makes this being together so precious is that i have to wake up in eight hours and go to work and leave you in the morning no never never that never gives more meaning to me maybe i'm weird or i'm wrong i don't know but you know i have this uh, s- suspicion that that most people when they really think about it agree with me here you know it's not death that gives meaning to life it's not the absence of good things you know that's that's stupid truly is stupid why i am saying this and why my point of view has changed has it changed evolved over the time to say this is because i can see a future where we can live much longer we can live to be 150 healthy and 200 healthy we can you know potentially merge our minds with machines we can augment our bodies you know either biologically to transform our bodies to be you know to have super cells everywhere in our bodies to continuously regenerate into practically infinity, you know, for thousands and thousands of years, no problem. Or to replace our body parts with machinery, you know, or nanorobotics, which essentially might be called biological agents, but created by human beings, so let's call them nanomachines. You know, there are many different avenues of ways of maybe mind uploading some way, you know, do not create the copy, but to genuinely transfer our minds and existence, consciousness to machine and then live on for thousands and thousands of years. You know, I see no good argument for death, really. You know, for anyone listening, you know, anyone who really, you know, is here and, you know, trying to think along with me here, you know, it is not death that gives meaning to life. Saying that is just a rationalization. You know, it's it's that uh, it's that fable with the fox and the grapes. You know, there is this fox, and it go. Let's say apple trees because I'm bad at pronouncing grapes. Uh, so the fox goes to an apple tree and sees a beautiful apple and wants that apple. And you know, it tries to climb the tree. You know, spends a good amount of time. You know, trying to get the apple. You know, previous ways of jumping, trying to climb the tree, trying to get that apple. You know, beautiful apple. But no matter how hard the fox tries, it can't get that apple that he wants. So in the end, he has to give up. And by giving up, he says, well, you know, maybe that apple is not so good after all. I don't need it. It wasn't so good. Maybe my stomach is not so empty. I will find better apples somewhere else. You get where I'm going with this. Justifications because of the inevitable, inevitable things that the fox could not change. So to make himself feel better, he says that, you know, I didn't want it after all. You know, if you don't want to die today, if you don't want to die tomorrow, what makes you think you want to die when you're 100 years old? You know, think about it. I don't want to die right now. I'm quite sure I don't want to die tomorrow. Why in the world would there come a point where I said, you know, I'm done with this. I've had enough. I see people and I talk with plenty of people who have this viewpoint that, you know, they they really seem to believe it, that, you know, they imagine young people, you know, but young people, they imagine that once they have some fulfilled life and they live to be 80 years old or something, then they'd be like, 
job well done, you know, I've had enough, I'll go to sleep forever. That makes absolutely no sense to me. Um, so, so, so that is just stupid. I think that's again rationalization, justification. I think there is something with human biology. You know, there are some studies that say that older people be, tend to be happier because they just care less, which is wonderful. Uh, and and so you know that might be a reason why younger people might be fooled into thinking that you know it's normal that old people truly genuinely feel like they've had enough but it's a drug like everything it's our ne neurochemistry it's the soup it's it's determined by our genetics and our, our biology what we will feel like but anyway given the option to die tomorrow or to live tomorrow, you would choose to live. And you know, ten years from now, I think you know, I would, I would still choose to live. Um, so, you know, I, I think given the opportunity, people have limited Im imagination. You know, people think that there's some smaller limited amount of things that you can do in the world. But if you engage in your imagination truly and think about it and the future, our technology and our beautiful minds, what we can accomplish and create in the world, there will be exponentially more and more and more things to feel, create and do and to experience and ways to connect with people, you know, unimaginable to us currently what will be possible in 10 or 20 years. So much to explore in the universe and deep inside of our minds and, you know, the minds of other people around us. Um, why wouldn't you want to do that? That's crazy to me. But to me, it's really, it's crystal clear, it's simple, it's obvious, it's a justification, it's a rationalization, it's like the fox and the apple. You know, death is something that people can't change, so they delude themselves. And of course, this has been going on for thousands of years. People make these stories, so, so it would be somehow bearable to live and to see people die, that they go to heaven or, you know, they have a good life or their soul somewhere else, you know, some way to not go insane thinking about death and, you know, forever leaving this form of existence behind, you know. People underestimate how strong that feeling is and, you know, it's a blessing for us that we truly can't comprehend death on, unless we go deep into meditation or some psychedelic experiences uh, that open your mind and have ego death and feel what it's like. Um, so that's that's pretty much what I wanted to say. Uh, I think you know those of you who who have you know share my points of view, you know. Uh, I think it's not difficult to agree with this. You know, it, it's really simple what I'm saying, but uh, it's one of those things that's like in the background of a lot of people's minds. It's in the subconscious of many people. It's kind of stomped in there from childhood that people have this point of view that, you know, maybe death is not so bad. Maybe death gives meaning to life. No, 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 that's all wrong. That's all wrong. And we will see how wrong it is once our life extension technologies and artificial intelligence, all of that begins and it won't take long and we will see how truly people want to die. But, you know, I'm not blaming anyone. It's just ignorance. It's just, you know, <sighs> you get what I'm saying. I hope so. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any thoughts, please share them in the comments. And of course, thank you so much for watching and take care. <laughs>